That sounds good. That's a good sound. Me and work, me and working hey, together, bro. For sure. That's what it sounds like outside. It sounds like hard work outside. I don't know why they want to disturb my production, but it's all good. We finna rock and roll today, I'm my brother. It, man. What's up, Raheem? Hey, Raheem Zion, welcome. Hey, welcome, my brother. I'm so thankful. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited, man. Like we've been having these wonderful conversations, and now we finally get to put it on wax, bro. From where? From incarceration, from the penitentiary. The greatest American alive. Hey, I never thought that you can make friends and build relationships while you was incarcerated. And all of a sudden, I met this gentleman right here who was a motivational person, who's an encouraging person, who's a strong person, who helped me see things that, from a perspective that I wasn't prepared to see. And so through fellowship with this gentleman, it gave me the excitement and the encouragement to come and start my own brand, The Greatest American Alive, baby. Greatest American Alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so just working together, like, that's what gets me so excited. I think that men have to build men. You know, most people think that being a man is like a solitary thing. Like, man, you ain't no man if you don't get it on your own. And I'm like, I'm here to tell you that if men don't help men build, boy, we're going to have some real. Man, we only got two arms. Tell me. They expect us to have eight arms. Tell me. Hey, come do this. Come do that. Come do this. Come do that. Nobody wants to clean up. Nobody wants to go to work. Nobody wants to pay all the bills. Nobody. Come on, man. We got to start helping each other out. It has to be a collaborative effort, man. He used to, hey, we used to cook together, right? It's, it's a crazy thing to cook in prison. You're like, how you cooking? You got a hot pot and some bags. <laughs> and it's real crazy when you don't eat meat. So it's like, well, what do you eat? You know, the noodles and all this other stuff, and everybody eating their meat, so they trip out when I would cook. Because I would cook <laughs> the meat-free side, and the other people would eat the chili, the chicken, and all those different things on the other side. And we will make it work. I'm like, hey, man, that's for y'all. That's for me. Because I believe in that we should treat people how they want to be treated and need to be treated on top of that. Accept each other's truth. Meet, meet people where they are. Like, we be having expectations on what another person is supposed to be. And then judge them based on their character. I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to love you regardless. Like, what I've learned in life is to accept a person for what they is. Like, if you're a liar, man, I expect you to lie. And I'm going to love you for, the, for your lying ass. <laughs> like, you know, if you a thief, I expect you to steal. And I'm going to I'm going to love you for your thieving ass, man. But we be so judgmental because that's that's coming from a place that's coming from a place of scarcity. And I think that once we start working together and all of a sudden you can have a place of abundance. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like we're afraid because of these titles. We think we have to stand up to these titles. I'm a man. But what is that? What is that? That's a great question. Like when you ask what a man is, me basically, I think bio biologically, if you have a penis and two testicles, you are a man. And you might man, have... get the fuck out of here, man. What's up? You the only person that I know that had that allergy. <laughs> that I know. Cause I, I thought I was the only one. Tell me, tell me more. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> when you a child, you a female child, you have a male child. Okay. They're kids. Right. They become young adults. This is true. Then after 18 or after a certain time or maturity, they become a man and a woman because you can't call a man and a woman a kid. You can't. That's just literal. That's just what it is, right? For some reason, the world we live in right now, the things that we're saying are so provocative. Like, oh my goodness, you said a man has a penis and testicles? That's not right. I, whatever I think I am, that's what I am. I respect James Allen as a man thinker. I believe it. But when he says, as a man thinketh, these are my thoughts. I can't change my biology. I can't be like, I don't want no penis no more. I mean, I could go pay to have somebody cut it off, but I still have the DNA and the bone structure and the lungs of a, of a living, breathing man. And back to this man thing. Tell me. We can't get to the point of what kind of man we are because we so stuck on the narrative if you're a man or not. And then people use that to manipulate the masses. They use that. They use that. You are not the man I want you to be. The, let me tell you something. Women, women, women. There is no man that you desire. The one that you made up, he's, he does not exist. You looking for an imaginary nigga, man. Stop it. Man, the man <laughs> know me. They looking for a superhero. You got it on paper. He has to have this. He has to have that. He has to have this. But if I have... Where, the, where he at? <laughs> Where, where is that motherfucker at? Because when you find him, I need to meet that motherfucker. I need to get some of that energy. I know I can't get it out, but just let me get a little bit. <laughs> Shit. Where the hell he at? Raheem is in full effect, you hear me? <laughs> Shit. 
I'm trying to find that person. It's, it's so important. Like if I have the exact same expectations of a woman, she have a problem with me. If I say, I want you to be five foot five, less than 150 pounds and, ha and not have other people's children. Like how dare you say that about me? And you better not say she's not a woman. Ooh. You bet not. Say Look, I didn't say that you're not a woman. I said, you bet not say that she's not a woman. Is it okay for me to say that she's an irresponsible woman? Surely, but just don't say she's not a woman. Now, for me to say that, is it possible that instead of, instead of me looking at a man, because men should work, men should be about that action, there are traits of masculinity that we should embrace. But when, he, when a person does not meet this criteria, I can't say you're not a man. Maybe I should say you're an irresponsible man. Maybe I should say you're a man on your journey, on your path of learning. But we never got there. We never got there because we're too busy worried about if we're a man or not. And that's a very hard conversation in the world that we live in because, like, that delusion right there is what's destroying our nation. Not being able to accept a fully functioning man that's, that's biologically a man, not being able to accept him for what he is, that is destroying our, our whole entire culture, man. Hey, right now, I'm telling you, the transition from being a convict, an inmate, to being a citizen, it's a journey. It's a hard ass journey. And so when I come back and I got two strikes against me, I got child support on me and I got this felony conviction on me, uh, jobs don't want to hire me. And you looking at me as less than a man, but I'm a whole man. I just need opportunity, but we don't even, you're supposed to go get it. You're supposed to go learn. And I know lots of, lots of black men, they would, they would rather you go steal and go rob and go sell drugs so you get some money because money is what they think makes you a man. Well, that's what the media tells you. Money don't make you no man. But that's what the media say. Hey, can a, can a man be a helpmate? For sure. For sure. Man, for sure. You can be a helpmate to your woman in a masculine way. And while she's getting ready for work, you honor her blouse. But see, the thing is, men make the situation better. It's a balance. I believe so. It's a balance. And once you understand what the balance is and what you're good at, we figure out things. You do things, we figure out things. We get stuff done. Whatever it is, we find the balance and that's what makes the situation better. If men don't engage in these conversations and it's really, really hard, if I don't tell Raheem what I'm going through, it's hard for him to empathize with what I'm going through. We over here suffering in silence. Boy, if they can hear the stuff we talk about outside the mic. Oh my goodness. But see, I want to be respectful of other people's lives. Sometimes women do some bullshit, okay? And if you put them on front street, oh my goodness, you a bad person. But they they so worried about the stigma of society that they don't want their dirty laundry aired out. But they can talk crazy about me all day long. You ain't oh, shit ass nigga. But not just you. Everybody. This is what we do. That's human nature. We talk shit behind people's backs. That's what we do, whether we say we don't or not. But that creates an energy or a, a collective vibe but when somebody do it to you, all hell break loose. Oh my God, the world is, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. How dare you talk about me like that? And it's, and it's so disingenuous. Like once we can have an honest conversation about relationships, I think like every man wants to have a woman. That's beautiful. But before you have a woman, you should have a friend that holds you accountable. Oh, for sure. Girlfriend, boyfriend, dynamic. Mm-hmm. See, I have to do what's on TV or what they rapping about. And that's the problem. Because the white picket fence ain't for me. It ain't, it just, it's just not for me. What, what do you mean? Like the suburban home and all that? You don't want that? Well, mm, no, I don't. It don't work. <laughs> it don't work, hey. especially when you got kids from different women. It just, it happens. The stuff happens. Everybody's not the same, but we can have the same motive. We can go in the same direction. I can go down another street. You can go down the other street and we can meet. Ooh, life is all about storytelling. And we've been telling bad stories as men. And right now, we've been trying to embrace this victimhood mentality that women have. And that is not how this world works. We have to be of service, but we have to be in constant communication with other strong men on how we can serve our community better, how we can serve our spouses better, how we can be better fathers. This all comes through positive dialogue. Like, man, sometimes I fuck up. I do, and I need somebody to hold me Own accountable. Own it. I did that. I, I fucked up. Man, I went to jail. I sold up. I hurt the community, man. Like, this is what woke me up. Once I realized the system has conditioned me to not even know that I was playing along with the narrative. The narrative, I'm black. I'm a felon. I'm a man. I'm this. I'm this. All these different things just playing along and trying to fit the title. That's what caused all my pain. 
until I said, you know what? I'm going to be present, man. You know what? I like what's some weird stuff. I like playing chess. Nobody never know. I love it. Love playing chess. I like, like to sing poetry. Love it. I, I'm not a rapper. I came, I came from a generation that like, I, I love to write poetry also. And when I was writing poetry as a young man, they looked at it as a, as a queer trait. Yeah. Are you gay? Man, I do hair. I do nails. <laughs> I do sew-ins. Am I gay? Hell no. Nah. Hey, I'm going to tell you, like, just if you don't like the honest truth, being gay is to put a penis in your mouth or take one in your uh, anus, okay? That's homosexuality. But to have actual male love or to, eat, or to even engage in any type of activity that's perceived as feminine, it's not feminine, man. I can braid hair in a masculine way. What's up? It is what it is. I can cook in a masculine way. What's up? The, you can do these things and still be a man. And the narrative that the media has given us has has brainwashed us into thinking that we can't be whole people. And it's time to have a conversation. Hey, I'm a whole person. I'm a man, but I'm a human being. I have feelings. And you're not going to marginalize me based on your ideas. I'm not going to be a prisoner of your thoughts. But check this out, though. What's up? Even though, you no, know, not to bash the communities and different groups and ethnic groups or whatever, social groups, whatever you believe you are not to bash them i accept your reality that's your truth now when i just go off the rocker and just be my whole self accept it don't judge me based on your ideas man that's crazy allow me to to experience the full gamut of emotions and life experiences without your judgment or your criticism we've been so conditioned that economics creates power that we forget what actual power is and power is influence and through my strength and through my diligence, I can I can influence my family in a positive way. I can lead my children with my words and with my actions. And right now, hey, the money is not coming in, but my presence is just as valuable. What is leadership? Action. Leadership. Action. It's a bunch of different things. I'm with you. But influence. How you influence people. Negative, positive, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is your leadership is influence. It has impact. I realized this during incarceration. No matter if you have a lot or little, if you're that motherfucker, if you're that guy, if you have the it factor, people going to be jealous and envy of you any motherfucking way. Hey, this gentleman and I, true story, right? We were able to dictate the tone of an entire prison, okay? Like just by... This man was roaming around the prison, cutting hair, and through him cutting hair and doing business and being a man of character and integrity, he had a positive influence on the entire unit. Man, I, you watch it and people are like, hey, Raheem, hey, Raheem, like saluting this man because of what he stood for and how he carried himself. And when I saw the type of impact that men could have on other men, I was like, oh my goodness, if we were able to translate this to the world, what would happen? When men start working together and engage in brotherly love, philia like Philadelphia, brotherly love and a collective unit, oh my goodness, we could be one of the most powerful forces the world has ever seen. And that's something to be excited about. I read this book from Ralph Nader and Ralph Nader, he ran for president. He said it only takes 1% of the population to change an entire culture. And there are 10 million, there are 10 million men in America who are going through economic trouble, who are politically who are politically disenfranchised because of a felony. And if those men work together and have honest conversations, we'd be one of the most powerful political organizations in America. But you have to tell that story. You have to work with strong people to accomplish that. And that's why I get so excited. I'm so excited to have my friend home. You hear me? I'm so excited to have my excited friend home. Excited to be home, man. I've been, man, I used to write to and visualize what's to come. <laughs> Remember we was talking about Nubaru? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, man, you know what? You can do that. I'm like, man. Then I wrote you three years later and say, hey, man, it's a planet they call Planet X. Right. And the original name was Nibiru. <laughs> or Nibara. And I say, man, what the hell? This gentleman created his own world. And when he articulated the fact that he made his own world, I just got excited. Like, holy shit. Like, you can create your own space just by using your mind. You, you can tell a better story. And that, that better story is so impactful. He impacted me in a positive way. That, that shit gets me hyped. Man, I appreciate you for just being genuine. <laughs> just being genuine. Like, like we would sit at the table and it appear as if we're arguing. We're not arguing. We're just passionate about what we believe. And then we found the medium. Man, dude, being honest. Hmm, dude, being honest. You don't see that in today's society. I call it mental jousting, verbal sparring. It's just men sharpening men. How do you get strong? Like, we're going to talk in, in elevated tones because we try to get a point across. We're passionate about the thing that we say. And it's no offense. I don't... Man, the, the greatest skill that I've learned is how to acquiesce to the male ego. 
I'm like, oh shit, you got it. I see something in you and I'm not trying to come from you from a place of hostility. It's assertive, non-aggressive. I value you so much that I want to engage in the most an interesting, the most dynamic conversation possible. But we don't know how to engage. We sit back and watch. They be like, oh, what they over there doing? They think they too much. Oh man, they own to something. And then instead of engaging and sitting down and just not wanting to all the attention, they sit back and watch and act like and that's that ego though. That is ego. To embrace men i know men are competitive by nature that testosterone gets you going but learning self-control and how to work with other men that's one of the greatest skills that you could possibly have but that shit takes work though it yeah that takes work but also dummying down your greatness like i've been dummying down my greatness for years fuck that that's over with <laughs> man that's over with for show sure, for show sure. that's over with man it's i never knew that I can do the things that I can do. I never seen myself infinite. I was just trying to fit the situation until I kept going to these different situations and I still didn't fit. Say the infinite. To, infinite. Know, to know that my impact on this world is going to last. You can do anything. Shit. Like, I'm bigger than this physical flesh, man. I'm more, I'm more than your thoughts of me, man. But I'm going to tell you this, though. Like, a lot of, a lot of uh, scientists and people and the masses, we all say, oh, you know what? We might have came from monkeys. Uh, try pure consciousness. Just, just eat that up. We didn't come from no monkeys. Monkeys came from us. Pure consciousness. We needed something to play with. Infinite energy. Come on, man. Man, hey. Put a body on that. Every, everything, that's, everything that exists in our society came from a thought. Everything in our society came from a thought. Manifestation. Shit. So many men lack creativity. They lack imagination. And then if they do have a little bit of imagination, they lack the courage to execute. Life is about that action. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Niggas, I believe. Then what you did about it? Faith is who you are. God damn. So if you fell off or what do, what do they say in the religious stuff? You know, we're not real religious. But they Back, say, backslide. Backslide. There you go. Backslide. If you are a black, black a backslider, then that's just who you are. That's your action. Your action is to backslide, guy. That's your faith. But you can change your action, though. Exactly. You can change your faith. You can go from being an old moonwalking ass nigga to being, uh, I don't know what the opposite of that is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you could be Prince Michael Jackson or goddamn me, uh, Jay-Z. Go forward, man. Go forward. I tell my little sons, I say, go be great, man. Go be great. <laughs> go be you. And one of the beautiful things, I think that men should read to their children. It, it passes on this, this, it's a positive skill, right? And so while I was incarcerated, I forgot who got the book in, but they got the alchemist. Oh, for sure. We read, we all read it. The alchemist changed my life. And so when I got home, the first thing, one of the first things that I did, I read the alchemist to my boys. And as I read the story, they were so in, like, they was into it. It's like an adventure novel. And then all of a sudden, they started saying things from the book. I had my little son talking about, Dad, I'm, I'm on my personal legend. Mac Tub, Dad, my personal legend. It is written. I'm like, these ideas, these thoughts, these concepts that we pass on to our children, like, the impact of a man is so beautiful. But if we're not building each other, if we're not sharpening each other, man, the things that we pass on to our children, we, we, we're casting spells on them of doom and gloom and it's so it's time to get excited it's time to be happy be I'm, mindful god damn be my, man i answered a question yesterday and it really it, it shocked me it said do you believe in philosophy do i believe in philosophy okay everything is philosophy okay whether your philosophy is whatever it is it's the reason that you're in the position that you're in right now some of our philosophies need to be broadened Man, expand your horizons, you understand? TikTok, Twitter, all the social medias, these things are exceptionally powerful, but it's just infinite scrolling. It's perpetual scrolling. And instead of consuming, I need you to create. My brother say the matrix. He say, man, you can't even put your phone down to finish your homework, son. You want, And you wonder why it's taking you so long because you keep picking up the phone strolling. What are you getting from that? You're not even looking up the answer to the question because all you got to do is get the question from the homework and put it on the phone and get the answer but you're not even doing that that's the craziest time like right now while i was going to college i had the app on my phone the word app and you could just hit the little talk button and you could talk your whole paper to the phone i said holy christ i ain't gotta write nothing down 
I said, this is like, this is a cheat code. And then children would show other, like, I'm a, I'm a grown man in college, all right? And then children would show up without their homework. I said, man, you could have talked your paper into the phone on your way here. But instead, you're scrolling. You have so much technology to make learning so easy, but we don't want to learn because we're we're immersed in this media. And oh, wild. learning? Hell no. Nah. What is that? I know everything. How in the hell y'all know every goddamn thing? All these new kids. Don't, how they know everything? Don't know shit. Man, my baby was three years old. She used to say, I know daddy, I know daddy. Before I even said it, I said, well, what the hell I know? <laughs> what, what, what the hell you know? Tell me what I'm about to say. Since you know every goddamn thing, tell me what I'm about to say. She get on my nerves. <laughs> I know, I know, daddy. I know, I know. You don't know shit. Hey, if me, my baby though. If if men don't talk like this, that we can't build each other. We sitting around and we have our own agendas. But life is being a man is not a solitary endeavor. You're not a solo. You're not a solo mission. It takes a collective effort for men to be strong. It does. It just does. Silent competition, you know? Work ethic. See, seeing other men do good things and saying, I want to do good things but too. But is it, is it just, is it competition or is it teamwork? It can be both. It can be both. It can be both. Yeah, I agree. It can be both. The competition thing is if it's a finish line. Ain't no finish line. That's it's just what we do. Like get, gladiators, they just, that's what they do. They just rough. They just work out. They just fight. They just take it to the next level. But being a being a gladiator is a learned skill, though. If 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 you Practice. get around gladiators, boy, you, you're not gonna want to be around a man who's working out and you sitting there eating chips and ho hos and shit. You are gonna remove yourself because you know that you can't compete. And then eventually, when your life go full circle, then you say, "Hey, I seen them dudes do some push ups, or I seen them do these squats, or I seen them hit old dude with this." overhand or this jab i'm gonna try it <laughs> this time around if you don't do the work you might get your ass whooped and these are facts about being a man like we can't hide from the aggression there is aggression that comes with having testosterone and having muscles but it's it's only intimidating if you're not doing the work you should only be scared if you ain't got no power you understand it's so much static out there though static it's just so much static out there and that's where we get we get stuck. Raheem, we used, to, we used to talk for hours, and this conversation could go on forever. I'm so thankful that you came to have this conversation with me. It's like, I swear to goodness, man, this is prophecy fulfilled. What? Prophecy fulfilled. Raheem Zion, the greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. <laughs> the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.